The word myth comes from the Greek word mythos, meaning something like word or story. This video will look into various types of myths and examples. The myths we're concerned with here are the traditional stories told by people in the past to explain where they came from, how the earth was formed, where the gods live and what they do, and what happens to people when they die. Myth has existed in every society. Indeed, it would seem to be an essential constituent of human culture. Because the variety is so great, it is difficult to generalize the nature of myths. But it is clear that in their general characteristics and details, people's tales reflect, express, and explore the people's beliefs about themselves. And so myths are absolutely vital when it comes to studying societies now and in the past. Because myths tell the stories of the gods and fantastical events with no attempt at proof, it is sometimes assumed that they are simply stories with no factual basis. However, it is essential to distinguish between myths and stories that are merely untrue. The purpose of mythology is to provide easily remembered stories that answer age-old questions such as, Who am I? Where did I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going, particularly when I die? In myths, the story's meaning is more important than its literal truth. Types of myth How the world was made or ideological myths Ideological myths explain why specific things are the way they are or came to be. For example, you could explain lightning and thunder by saying that Zeus is angry and stamping around in the heavens letting off his lightning bolts. Ideological myths are often origin and creation myths that explain why the world is the way it is. A creation myth is a symbolic narrative of how the world began and how people first came to inhabit it. The Inuit Creation Myth The Inuit are a group of indigenous peoples who live in the Arctic and subarctic regions of Greenland, Canada, and Alaska. The icy home of their ancestors inspired many myths of fantastical whale, walrus, caribou and seal hunts. In a land with no sun for getting for a quarter of the year, the night sky and the aurora borealis, or northern lights, came to dominate the imagination of the people who lived in this polar landscape. To some, the curtain of green and purple light that broke out from time to time across the dark winter sky was thought to be images of the souls of the giants that once walked the earth or the souls of animals. To others, they were the ephemeral images of the souls of their deceased family and friends dancing in the next life. However, to some Inuit believed that the lights were more sinister. They thought they would come down and cut off your head if you whistled at them. The Inuit believe the first people were two giants who had a baby daughter named Sedna. The child became so big that its parents could not feed it, so in their despair, they took the child out to sea and threw her into the ocean. When the child tried to get back in their boat, they cut her fingers off, and so she slipped into the sea and drowned. The result of this horrendous tale was that each of her fingers became a powerful sea creature, and Sedna became a powerful spirit who controlled the sea and its animals. The myth explains why the Arctic Ocean is so full of animals and so hostile and dangerous. Nature and Man or Thonic Myths Thonic means relating to or inhabiting the underworld. The gods of the underworld were named Theopthanioi or Thonian gods by the Greeks. They were ruled by the god Hades and his queen Persephone. The term Thonic gods is used for gods connected with agriculture and the natural world. Hades and Persephone In Greek mythology, the god Hades, the brother of Zeus, was the ruler of the underworld. Hades rarely left his kingdom but did not want to rule alone, so he kidnapped Persephone to be his queen. Distraught, her mother, Demeter, goddess of agriculture, let the crops die until Zeus struck a deal with his brother for her release. Hades gave Persephone a pomegranate to eat on her long journey from the world of the dead to the land of the living. When she ate it, she realized she was no longer totally immortal. 
This meant she would have to spend half of the year with Hades and six months with Demeter. The story of Persephone and Hades explains the turn of the seasons and that life cannot exist without death. When Persephone is in the underworld with Hades, it is winter on Earth. When she emerges from the underworld in springtime, life on Earth begins again. Isis and Osiris The ancient Egyptian god Osiris was the god of life, death, fertility, and the underworld. The story of his death and resurrection perfectly matched the cycle of the agricultural year from the annual Nile flood through the growing season and then the season of harvest or death. The Greco-Roman writer Plutarch and others noted that the sacrifices to Osiris were gloomy, solemn, and mournful. The Great Mystery Festival of Osiris was celebrated in two phases. Phase 1 began at Abydos on the 17th of the month of Athar or the 77th day of the year and commemorated the death of the god and the maximum extent of the flood. It was a bit like the Christian Holy Day, Good Friday. Osiris's resurrection was celebrated with the raising of the dead pillar at the beginning of the growing season on or about day 120. This ceremony symbolized not only the rebirth of the land, its renewed fertility and its readiness for planting. It also celebrated the God's triumph over the death itself and was akin to the Christian Easter Sunday. The Divided Self or Structural or Psychological Myths Structural myths are said to be myths based on human emotion. These myths show the two sides of the human mind, the moral side and the immoral side. They confirm the duality of human nature. The psychological myth theory states how myths are based on human emotion and that they come from the human subconscious mind. The approach works because all humans had similar fears, questions, and wishes that, to them, were unexplainable in the past. And so stories were constructed to ease their anxieties, explain the inexplicable, and enable them to fulfill their wishes. Psychological myths often take the form of journeys of discovery from the known to the unknown. The journey is epic and usually involves resolving a crisis or coming to an important realization about the nature of life or the gods. Probably the best-known classical myth of this type is that of Oedipus. Oedipus is born to King Laius and Queen Jocasta at Thebes in the best-known version of the myth. King Laius wished to thwart the prophecy given at his son's birth that he would one day kill his father and marry his mother. So he sent Oedipus to die on a mountainside. However, a shepherd took pity on the baby and passed him to King Polybus and Queen Merope of Corinth, whose marriage was loving but childless. Later, on a visit to the oracle at Delphi, Oedipus learns of the prophecy. But, being unaware of his true parentage, he believes he is fated to murder Polybus and marry Merope. So he leaves Corinth and heads for Thebes. On the way, he falls into an argument with an older man and kills him, not knowing he is Laius. When he arrives in Thebes, he finds the city in mourning and at the mercy of a monster, Sphinx. This half-lion half-woman guarded the entrance to Thebes and asked all passers-by the most famous riddle in history, which creature has one voice and yet becomes four-footed and two-footed and three-footed? She strangled and devoured anyone who could not answer. Oedipus solved the riddle by answering, man because he crawls on all fours as a baby, then walks on two feet as an adult, and uses a walking stick in old age. Oedipus had answered the monster's riddle correctly and won the dead king's throne, and the hand in marriage of the king's widow, his mother, Jocasta. Jocasta, upon realizing that she had married her own son, hanged herself. Oedipus then seized two pins from her dress and blinded himself with them. Oedipus represents two enduring themes of Greek myth and drama, the flawed nature of humanity and the godly potential within all of us. Oedipus is both blessed and cursed. His hubris makes him kill the old man on the road, thus setting him on the road to fulfilling his destiny. On the other hand, he is a winner, he beats the Sphinx, saves the city and gets the kingdom. The story also illustrates the power of fate. Fate was far too powerful to be overridden by human agency, in reality, Oedipus' card, like everyone else's, 
was stamped from the start. Historical or Uemurism Myths Uemurism is defined in modern academic literature as the theory that myths are distorted accounts of actual historical events. Such historical myths retell an event or events from the past but elevate them to give the events cultural meaning. The most famous historical myth in the West is Homer's epic 8th century before the common era tale of the Iliad. This epic poem tells the story of the siege and fall of the city of Troy. According to this theory, storytellers repeatedly elaborate upon historical accounts until the figures in those accounts gain the status of gods. This theory is named after Euhemerus, circa 320 BCE, because he suggested that the Greek gods developed from legends about human beings. Euhemerus was not the first to rationalize mythology through history, as Euhemeristic views are found in earlier writers, including Xenophanes, Herodotus, Hecateus of Abdera, and Ephorus. However, Euhemerus is credited for having developed the theory and application to all myths, considering mythology history in disguise. If you have enjoyed this video or found it useful please don't forget to hit the like button and if you want to find out more about the ancient world why not subscribe and never miss an issue?